Coming up on Engage Richland, with temperatures on the rise, our pets also can feel the heat. We've got WeatherWise tips to help you keep your pet cool. Plus, it's been a busy couple of weeks for the Columbia Richland Fire Department. I'll tell you about several events that highlight all the good the department does in the community. And I'm Leroy Kane here at the Columbia Animal Shelter, and I'm here to tell you about the Richland County Featured Pet of the Week. Engage Richland starts right now. Hello and welcome to Engage Richland. I'm your host, Michaela Leung. New volunteers, new fire truck, new smoke alarms, and more. Paul Harris joins us to tell you what's new at the Columbia Richland Fire Department. Paul? That's right, Michaela. These past few weeks have been pretty busy for the Columbia Richland Fire Department and Chief Aubrey Jenkins. In late April and early May, the fire department and the fire marshals from Richland County Emergency Services joined volunteers from the South Carolina Red Cross to install and check smoke alarms in Eastover, Gatson, Hopkins, and Denny Terrace during the second sound alarm campaign. Councilwoman Gwendolyn Kennedy joined Chief Jenkins when visiting some of the residents' homes. The Sound the Alarm campaign seeks to save lives through the installation of smoke alarms and educating residents about the home's fire safety. Richland County Councilwoman Allison Terracio was among the community leaders who helped usher in the service of a new fire truck during a push-in ceremony at the Divine Street Station. On May 3rd, Richland County Councilman Jim Manning was on hand when the Columbia Richland Fire Department recognized four firefighters and a resident for their efforts last year to save the life of an area track and field coach. We always look at heroes. We have to get our, at our firefighters, our EMS workers, our police officers. But no, there are other heroes as well um, that, that rise up to the, to the occasion and make things happen. I just want to say thank you to everybody who was involved and when we all work together, wonderful things happen for Richland County. So I'm here to celebrate the wonderful work that our folks do in the county. You know, we, we appreciate this award, we appreciate all this, but this is our job. We're not heroes, this, this is what we're here for. I'm talking as the captain, but I'm nothing without the crew. I'm nothing without those guys back there. So. We train often, we train very often. We have to be prepared because we respond to people's worst days. That's what we respond to, so we have to be ready for it at all times. Certificate of Recognition, Columbia Richland Fire Rescue wishes to recognize Mr. Patrick Roach, Jr. for ex exhibiting courage and selflessness in the steps he took to save a life on May 2nd, 2018. And I'm very honored today to present this coin to you as well for excellence, because what you did was excellent, and we appreciate what you did. Now, even one way you can get this coin, right. you gotta know how to get it now, okay? This is the coin, but I can't just hand it to you. I gotta shake your hand to give it to you, All right. okay? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate it. It's now that time for another Richland County Did You Know? Did you know Richland County government funds the cost of buildings, equipment, and personnel to provide fire services in unincorporated areas of the county? For example, Station 20 in Ballantyne serves neighborhoods in the northwest part of the county. The station and some of its firefighter volunteers are featured in the 2019 Richland County calendar for the month of May. You can download a copy of the calendar at the county's website. And finally, in what was a first for the fire department, officials recognized the work of the fire department's many volunteers by holding a graduation ceremony on May 6th. More than 20 volunteer firefighters were sworn in during the ceremony that drew more than 200 people. That's all from here. Now, back to you, Michaela. Thanks, Paul. If you're a pet owner, you'll want to stay tuned to this next segment for tips on keeping your pets safe during warm weather. Here's emergency planner Ben Marisites with WeatherWise.
Hello, I'm Ben Marisites. Welcome to another edition of WeatherWise. The spring and summer months can be very uncomfortable, even dangerous for people and pets. We are all sensitive to heat in one way or another. Sometimes we may not pay attention to how our pets are doing in the hot weather. Here are some tips to keep your pets safe and cool during the spring and summer seasons. Never leave your pets in a parked car. Never, ever, even with the car running and the air conditioning on. On a warm day, the temperature inside a car with the windows slightly open can reach over 100 degrees within 10 minutes. So avoid leaving your pets in the car at all costs. Take care when exercising your pet. On very hot days, limit your pet's exercise to early morning or evening hours. Asphalt gets very hot and can burn your pet's paws, so walk your pet on the grass if possible. Oh, and always carry water with you to keep your pets from dehydrating. Make sure they have protection from the heat and sun, along with some cold water. During heat waves, add ice to their water when possible. Tree shade and tarps are ideal because they don't obstruct airflow. And finally, make sure your pets stay cool on the inside and out. As always, provide ice cold water, whether your pets are inside or outside. You can also provide your pets with a cooling body wrap, vest, or mat. So keep these tips in mind to keep your pet cool during the summertime. From WeatherWise, this has been Marisites. Did you miss the last county council meeting? You can watch a recording of the most recent county council meeting on RCTV and see archived meetings on the county website. In the meantime, here's Council Chair Paul Livingston with highlights from the May 7th meeting. We, we, we approved a, a dirt, ra dirt road paving package, which, which I think some communities are going to be excited about to see those dirt road paving projects moving forward. I think that, that was really, really important as it relates to the um, painting program. Um, and we also, um, um, with, with, with the painting program, start looking at, you know, how do we make sure um, projects that may appear to be um, overfunded, um, um, how do we get them in line? We were talking about having a workshop to do that, to make sure that happens, and make sure we scratch the penny um, funds as far as we possibly could scratch those, those funds. The Friends of Harbison State Forest held a ribbon cutting and open house to celebrate the installation of new kiosks and trail markers. The project was funded by the Richland County Conservation Committee. The trail improvements have received high marks from the cyclists who join from all over to ride the trails. Councilwoman Joyce Diggerson attended the event to give remarks and cut the ribbon. If you're a pet owner who adopted a cat or dog from a shelter, thank you. There are many cats and dogs right here in Richland County waiting for the perfect family. For more on pet adoptions and the mission of Richland County Animal Services Division, here's Animal Care Supervisor Leroy Kane. Hi, I'm Leroy Kane with the Richland County Animal Care Department. The mission of the Department of Animal Care is to provide the citizens of Richland County with the protection of life and property through prompt response time and efficient procedures. The department attempts to reduce the number of strays, control the outbreak of rabies, and educate the public on the importance of licensing their pets and the responsibilities of pet ownership. While pet ownership is important, there are some people out there looking to become first-time pet owners. Well, here's a look at our Richland County featured Pet of the Week. And for those of you that have pets, as Bob Barker used to say, help control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. Back to you, Michaela. Richland County government offices will be closed Monday, May the 27th in observance of Memorial Day. Curbside trash collection service is suspended for that day. Trash routes scheduled Monday will be picked up Tuesday and all regularly scheduled collections for the week will be delayed one day. For more information on trash collection, call the Solid Waste and Recycling Division at 576-2440. To get reminders of the trash collection days for your home, download the Solid Waste and Recycling app. 
Richland Recycles Day saw hundreds of residents coming through the SC State Fairgrounds on May 11th to take advantage of the opportunity to properly dispose of unwanted household items. Richland Recycles Day, spearheaded by the Solid Waste and Recycling Division, is the county's largest annual recycling event. I think it's wonderful. It's a way for the residents to get rid of stuff that they don't need. There's a lot of things that people think are recyclable that are not, that do not need to go into the recycle containers. And if they bring them here, even though it's a once a year event, it's really great. Jim Manning was elected to Richland County Council in November of 2008 to represent District 8, which includes the growing city of Forest Acres and the popular Decker Boulevard's International Corridor. He sits down with Public Information Officer Paul Harris for our Richland County Conversation. For someone that's been in public office for quite some time, what advice would you give someone that's looking to run for public office for the very first time? Well, I think to really find out what you're getting into, um, it still shocks me in every election cycle, people coming in and where's my office, where's my secretary, uh, oh gee, I didn't know we had all these meetings besides the first and third Tuesday in the public zoning. and. I just think it's real important that you really find out what it is that you're running for and what it entails. To view the entire Jim Manning interview, check out the Richland County YouTube page or stay tuned to RCTV. To celebrate National Correctional Officers Week, the leadership staff at the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center held its annual cookout for detention officers May 7th and 8th to show appreciation for all they do. Uh, this is uh, National Correctional Officer Appreciation Week, so we're doing uh, what we can to try to show officers that we appreciate what they do day in and day out for Richland County, Alvin Escalade. I got a delicious hamburger and hot dog on the grill. It's Mr. Kitchen. Fabulous appreciation. We appreciate them like they appreciate us. During a recent Engage Richland event, the Richland County Emergency Services Department offered and presented a variety of hands-on demonstrations to show attendees how to respond to emergency situations. We have seven different stations set up tonight. We have the CERT station, which is the Community Emergency Response Team. We have our mass casualty bus um, set up. We have our ambulance and then our emergency management division, which has the weather stations and all that good stuff. Also, um, our motorcycle paramedic, our mobile integrated health care, and also our hands-only CPR station that's set up. We do have displays also for everybody to be able to grab some handouts and brochures and so that way they'll have some information on how to become an EMT or a paramedic and also how they can join the CERT team. What we're going to do is we're going to go through and start working with teaching people how to do hands-only CPR. Hands-only CPR, of course, everybody learned traditionally that you're supposed to get respiration breaths with that. Well, things have changed now, so we're not doing that quite as much as we did in the past and just we've learned that compressions and moving the blood around your body are the most important thing. It's very important because that's one of the main things when you find someone who is unresponsive, if they don't have a heartbeat, then the best thing you can do is start that hands-only CPR and start moving oxygen around their body because their body's not oxygenating without that. All of us enjoy doing this and we're glad to see everyone that came out tonight and we look forward to doing it again. Richland County government employs dedicated people who work hard in a range of fields to provide services and programs to the community. Here's a look at some recent statistics that show how Richland County employees work hard for you.
Also, make sure to visit our social media platforms. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash richlandsc. Hit the like button to always be informed on anything Richland County government. On Instagram, just type in Richland County SC on your Instagram search engine. And if you're currently watching this on YouTube, well, hit the subscribe button right below the video. Let us hear from you. We welcome your feedback and ideas for upcoming shows. Contact us at PIO at richlandcountysc.gov. The next new episode of Engage Richland comes your way May 28th. In the meantime, catch repeats of the show on RCTV between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. each day or check it out on the county's YouTube page. For all of us at the Richland County Public Information Office, I'm Michaela Leung. Thanks for watching.